Five with Jerry Springer, Norma Rashid, Pat Berry's Weather, Ken Brew with Sports, and Clyde Gray's Northern Kentucky Report. Now, Cincinnati's News Five tonight. Good evening. At this hour, the plan is to convert the Zimmer power plant from nuclear to coal. Now, if you're wondering how that may affect you, think about this. The move to coal will cost each customer of CG&E, on average, an extra $200 a year. And those bills will continue to come year after year after year. News 5's Jeff Hirsch was the only Cincinnati reporter on hand in Louisville, where the Army Corps of Engineers gave the green light to sink nearly another $2 billion into Zimmer. It has already cost $1.7 billion to make Zimmer into a monument to nuclear power generation which never came to pass. It could cost $1.9 billion more to convert to coal power. But the Corps of Engineers said coal conversion is the most cost-effective way to guarantee electric power for the future. Critics say other options should have been considered, such as perhaps conservation or buying power from other utilities or even building a new coal-fired plant from scratch. But the Corps said it reviewed various options and agreed with Zimmer's owners that coal conversion is logical. And the Corps dismissed critics who said the Corps should have hired outside consultants to look at more than just the utility company's numbers. We in the Corps feel we do have the expertise to review those figures. We are not a partner to the three utilities. We have no real interest one way or the other. That is our function under law is to be that independent or objective reviewer not to obtain one by contract someplace else. The Corps conceded there are environmental concerns to coal conversion, such as air quality and the impact on shellfish life in the river, but the Corps concluded those problems can be dealt with and the benefits to coal conversion outweigh the negatives. According to the Ohio Consumers Council, with that agreement on average, you'll see $272 a year added to your utility bills. Without that deal, it would have been $404. The Consumers Council says those rates will not go up until after coal-fired Zimmer goes online in 1991. Jeff Hirsch, News 5 Tonight. Now, not everyone is overjoyed that Zimmer is being converted. In fact, officials in Dayton are considering a lawsuit to block that conversion to coal. And they may ask Cincinnati to join in that lawsuit. Well, another controversial plant, the Fernald Uranium Processing Facility, finds itself the target of a lawsuit. This one from the Ohio Attorney General. Before a committee chaired by Senator Glenn, Attorney General Anthony Celebrezzi announced he will file a lawsuit against the Department of Energy, which owns the plant, and Westinghouse, which operates it. He says an investigation says Fernald has released radioactivity without telling anyone. An investigation into what caused traffic reporter Nancy McCormick to go up in the air last November 25th has pretty much revealed one possible answer, pressure. Pressure to keep her station, WKRC, competitive and hence pressure to fly, even in bad weather. McCormick and her pilot, Dan Gould, were killed when their helicopter crashed into the California Nature Preserve. Another pilot, Jim Stanley, said today he and McCormick had talked about the pressure to fly, even in dangerous weather. He said there was definitely pressure for her to be in the air, and that if anybody else was in the air doing the traffic report, she had to be there or she ran the risk of losing her job. From whom did that pressure come? She said from her station. Now, the owner of the helicopter, Lou Mays, told the investigators he suggested McCormick stay on the ground that morning. Her response, WLW is flying. If I don't try, I'll be fired. Now, we also talked to WKRC's news director, Richard Hunt. He said there was never any pressure on McCormick to fly, and the decision to go up was always hers, not the station's. In Covington tonight, a political beginning. That city's new mayor chaired his first commission meeting tonight, promising to clean up Covington. Our Northern Kentucky Bureau Chief Clyde Gray was at that meeting and joins us now live with more information. Clyde, how'd that first meeting go? Jerry, apparently it went pretty well. Ron Turner has a two-pronged plan for his eight-month stint in office. Continue the city's development boom and clean it up, literally. There were two items on tonight's agenda related to litter control, and though they predated Turner's rise to power, both fit in with his plan to get trash off the city streets. It was a pet peeve of mine just as Joe Citizen, and uh, it's something that I think needs to be done, and I think it's very doable, and it's something I think people of Covington want. Also tonight, the Covington Commission was asked to enter an agreement with the Fogg Group to turn the Emory Row complex 
into 20 upscale apartments. Now, the developers hope to get revenue bonds to finance the $1.6 million project. Covington has been asked to pay for a $100,000 parking facility to go along with that. Jerry? Okay, thank you, Clyde. Clyde Gray reporting live from Northern Kentucky. Victoria? In Columbus today, Woody Hayes, the legendary Ohio State football coach who died of a heart attack last week, was eulogized as a man who had a passion for excellence. News 5's John London tells us on the night beat, Hayes' influence was felt by those who attended the first of two public memorial services in Columbus. The politicians and the players were all there in the church where Woody Hayes worshipped. They came to pay their tributes to a legend. I've known Woody 40 some years, so uh, mine is a long memory. Everything Woody did was good. John Hicks played on Ohio State's 1968 championship team. And former Middletown Mitty Jim Nine played for Hayes a few years earlier. Anybody that ever played for him will never forget him. He gave me a lot of direction. He helped me get in law school. Uh, he helped me get a job while I was in law school coaching football. Did you stay in touch with him over the years, John? Oh, yeah. The coach and I was very close. And like most people, we all stayed, you know, we talked a lot and clowned around, you know. And our, you know, as we got older, our relationship got better because, you know, although he's the coach and we loved him very much, he was like a father. Inside the First Community Church, some 1,400 people heard former President Richard Nixon reminisce about the first time he met Hayes after the 1957 Ohio State-Iowa game. Well, I wanted to talk about football. And Woody wanted to talk about foreign policy. <laughs> well, you know, Woody, we talked about foreign policy. <laughs> Nixon called Hayes a Renaissance man who had a profound understanding of the great forces that moved the world. No matter what the circumstances, Woody always taught. He had a respect for learning, a fervent belief in education. Like many of you, I first saw Woody Hayes when I was a child, over 30 years ago, just beginning to recognize the excitement of football and the importance of sports competition. He leaves us a very human example of imperfection and greatness. We learn from both, but I don't mind telling you, I prefer to remember the greatness. In Columbus, John London, News 5, on the night beat. Thanks, John. Up next on News 5 tonight, you'll see how Irish eyes are smiling in our area. And why they're frowning in Washington. We'll be right back. BMWs have always been engineered to provide a heightened awareness of the road. Now there's one that also provides a heightened awareness of everything above the road. Introducing the BMW 325i Convertible. Contact your nearest Cincinnati area BMW dealer for a thorough test drive. Introducing New Traditions Dinner Meats from Hormel. Select cuts of meat, already broiled, already browned. Ready for you to microwave to perfection. Pork chops, fish, and breast of chicken. The time has come for New Traditions. Real food, real fast from Hormel. So, you're the one in charge of finding new space for your company. Get ready for the ride of your life. Agents and owners will run you all over town and spin you around until you don't know which end is up. Unless, of course, you call Real Team. We're a team of salaried specialists working together to put your company in the right place. Before someone takes you for a ride, call Real Team. Congressional investigators looking into the Iran-Contra scandal have made a key decision this evening. They have tentatively given limited immunity from prosecution to former National Security Advisor John Poindexter and his aide, Lieutenant Colonel Oliver North. Now, this afternoon, Poindexter was ordered to testify before a House subcommittee, but Poindexter pleaded his Fifth Amendment rights as ordered by his attorney who was scolded by the committee's chairman. It's a matter of indulgence of the subcommittee, and you're kind of crowding it. I understand Just a little bit. And just a little bit more, and we're going to cut you off. Now, that limited immunity will allow North and Poindexter to testify openly before congressional hearings in May. Well, President Reagan is now preparing for his news conference Thursday night, where he'll surely be asked about his role in the Iran-Contra deal. 
The news conference will be the president's first official meeting with the press in more than four months. Meanwhile, the president took to the streets of Washington today for the first time in a while. He first met with the 37 Russian sailors who were rescued when their ship sank off the Atlantic coast. Mr. Reagan then went on to the home of the Irish ambassador for a special St. Patrick's Day stop. After that, it was back to the White House where he was greeted by bagpipers and given an Irish cane. Well, the Irish celebration in our area tonight continued. News 5's Michael Collins found out on the night beat that on St. Patrick's Day, there's a little bit of the Irish in all of us. No matter where you went in our town today, it was kind of like, well, a holiday. At Springdale's Maple Knoll Village, 88-year-old Florence Walton, who came here from Ireland in 1924, says she doesn't quite understand it. I think they make much more fuss of it in, in America than they do in Ireland. And you know, she just might be right. It seems since early this morning, just about every place I've gone, there's been one song on people's lips. Oh, Danny boy, the pipes... The pipes are calling. From glen to glen and, and down, down the mountainside. The summer's gone and, and all the roses falling. Now come ye back when summer's in the meadow. Oh, when the valley's white and white with snow. It's I'll be here. Well, now wait just a minute. Florence, why is this non holiday holiday so big? My Americans love parties, yes, yes. So I guess it's not so much St. Patrick's Day as it is the parties that make us all Irish. In Cincinnati, Michael Collins, News 5 Tonight. Oh, Danny boy, oh, Danny boy, I love you so. <laughs> I think we ought to apologize to the Irish for that rendition. Thank you, Michael so. O'Collins. Well, will the luck of the Irish bring some sunshine in the next few days? Pat will have the latest on our area weather. That's a pretty green dress. And the Reds contend with some good news and some bad news. You'll see why it's rented when we return. <laughs> it's Ford's in-crowd sale days now at your best quality Ford dealers. Get into huge savings with 3.9% APR financing or up to $600 cash back direct from Ford on new Mustangs, Escorts, and Tempos. Plus, save hundreds more with manufacturer's preferred equipment packages for a total in-crowd savings of between $1,800 and $2,200. Get in with the in-crowd now at your best quality Ford dealers. See your dealer for complete details. Say, hon, wasn't there some meatloaf left over from last night? Hey, well, there was. John was hungry after school. Oh, well, he didn't eat the rest of that chicken, too, did he? Yeah, well, he was real hungry. Uh -huh, and the salad that you had left gone. Oh, gone. Oh, no. Plus oh. the last of the apple pie, a quart of milk, milk mm -hmm. a dozen cookies. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. What is it? Bingo! Red Baron pizza. Mm. Where is he now? Football practice. He won't be home for a half an hour. We can do it! Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Todd here for West Hills Ford, 5400 Glenway Avenue. Right now, West Hills Ford is offering great deals on brand new 87 Ford Escorts. For a limited time, you can get low 3.9% financing, plus up to $600 cash back direct from Ford. West Hills Ford will sell you a new 87 Escort for as low as $87 down. That's right, $87 down, and we have over 50 to choose from. Visit West Hills Ford, 5400 Glenway Avenue, and tell them Todd sent you. You'll love Levitt's store-wide sale. Levitt's has cut prices throughout their store to bring you incredible savings at Levitt's big store-wide sale. The one sale you can't afford to miss. And what a beautiful day to be really celebrating St. Patrick's Day. Sure. Toria yeah. sitting in, of course, for Norma, who has not had a baby yet. That's right. Kate's Maybe in a couple days. Yes, that's what's expected. Uh, yeah. Patrick Gerald, is that what it is? No, Gerald Patrick. Oh, okay. <laughs> We're going to fight about Norma's baby. You know, she may have Not a girl, guys. I hate to tell you, she might Patty have a girl. Geraldine. <laughs> 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 Weather. 
nice day for the Irish. Uh, you know that it is, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> you know it's getting uh, to be better weather. Of course, it's St. Patrick's Day. Also, this is the day, Toria, that our sunrise and sunset are at the same time. Well, not the same time. They're twelve exactly 12 hours apart, 647 a.m. and 647 p.m. So, in other words, we have as much daylight as we do darkness now. Exactly, and then the days are getting longer, and that's good, good news. news. Some bad news, though, tornadoes. Uh, mm. This evening in Natchez, Mississippi, that's also an indication of some uh, bad things happening. Of course, it means warmer weather's on its way, and we do have some rain on the horizon, another 24-hour horizon. Let me show you what's going on. We'll go outside and take a look at downtown, one of our gorgeous buildings here, and get to our record page. Our high today, 54, the record 76 in 1889. The low, 28, the record 5, that happened back in 1900 get right into it and I'll show you our current temperature 44 degrees humidity 35 percent and our winds out of the east at 14 now it was important for me to show you the satellite picture the couple I got all had something wrong with them so just don't look at the bottom fourth of your screen it's a little messed up but I want to show you how intense this band of showers is right up through and just to the west of Cincinnati that's just ahead of a leading edge of rain which will be on our horizon this time tomorrow night in fact a lot of you will be seeing the rain by this time tomorrow night still fairly warm even though we're getting an easterly flow of air that's actually starting in Canada and moving down for tomorrow more of the same thing the front and the rain gets a little bit closer to us but the high pressure system up here uh, in Moosonee West uh, Moosonee Canada is actually where it is is heavy enough and large enough that it will keep it away from us for it looks like most of the day tomorrow we'll have some partly sunny skies should be a high haze to some of the skies 63 degrees pretty warm for tomorrow but tomorrow night the rains move in I expect rain and thunder showers to happen both for Thursday and Friday and it looks like by the weekend some of this snow could be our area and a lot cooler weather coming up for this weekend here's our forecast and the way it reads out for overnight partly cloudy a low down to 36 degrees for tomorrow morning waiting on the bus it should be partly sunny an 8 a.m. temperature at 43 believe it or not that warm and then for Wednesday partly sunny warm could be windy tomorrow as much as 45 mile an hour winds how about that and a high of 63 here's that extended forecast partly sunny for tomorrow then it doesn't look too good, does it? You're going to have to get your umbrella out. We really haven't had to use that that much. 63 for tomorrow, 60 for Thursday, and 55 for Friday. As we roll into the weekend, it doesn't look good, so enjoy your day for tomorrow. Okay, and I love that pretty red dress. I like it. I know, and no I've got a little Jerry green says, in the belt. Looks very nice. I think I'll wear green tomorrow. Okay. Sorry. Jerry? Sorry, that's a very pretty dress. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we're talking about the reds here, and uh, speaking of red dresses, these are red uniforms, and unfortunately, right. some sad news with one of the players. Well, um, yeah, because he was really on the spot this year. I mean, everybody, the fans and the media, everybody on him, and Big you don't power like, back. Yeah, well, four weeks minimum. You know, when they say four, they really mean six. Reds are going to have to do with swing and nick. Remember last night we showed you the tape? He got hit on the wrist, broke it. The man is in a cast. Other than that, just another day in the office down in Tampa. Jim Rice soaking up the sun, but Jimbo and his buddies got skunked. Sixth inning, and Buddy Bell lets it rip to left. Leo Garcia has got it in warp five. He's all the way around from first, and the Reds win today 4-3 with a couple of runs in the ninth. Oster and Tracy Jones got the big hits in that inning, and now Soto throws in a practice game manana. Later, tonight, down in West Palm Beach, Braves and Phillies. Braves had the green on, socks and hats, and even green bases. The green seemed to work. Braves strike for three runs in the sixth. Bruce Benedict singles to left. Rafael Ramirez scores. Atlanta 3-0 at this point. The real hero for the Braves, though, a somewhat overweight Luis Leal. He pitched the final four innings, allowing just one hit and no runs. The Braves tonight win an exhibition game 4-0. Now, this is exactly the way these kind of games are supposed to end. Highlands headed to the Sweet 16, but you got your money's worth tonight in Kentucky. Region 9 playoff action, packed house at Connor High School, Newcastle and Highlands. Terry Sandfoss drives, and now the Breds lead by three. But back comes Darren Blassing game, 18-footer, tie game at 52. The Bluebirds go up by six. Newcath fights back. Andy Albrink's jumper right here. Now the next possession, time's running out. Game tied, but flashing game again pulls up for the baseline jumper. Highlands by two. New cap with the last second shot. Albrinks will not fall. Highlands wins. They're on the way back to the Sweet 16 with the win tonight. At Walnut today, they were watching horror films, the replay of their last second loss to Oak Hills a couple of months ago. Tomorrow night in Dayton, they meet again in the playoffs. 
Jeff. We know them like the back of our hand. They know us like the back of their hand. We're very familiar with each other. Uh, I've seen them play four or five times. They're, my assistant coach's son plays on the team. I've gone to games just to watch him play as a, as a you know, in biased uh, bystander. So uh, we were looking forward to it. Today at practice, some of the players told me the thing that makes Oak Hill so tough is that they hustle every trip down court. Tip-off for that game is at 6.30 at UD tomorrow. The other one tomorrow is Purcell Marion against Dayton Dunbar around 8.15. CBA playoff tonight. Slammers against Topeka. We're in the fourth quarter. The Slammers in white. Billy Martin with the steal. Cincinnati by five. Topeka comes back to tie with 22 seconds left. They uh, take the lead on Brad Wright's tip-in right there. Now, after a Topeka free throw, six seconds left, Vic Fleming launches a three-pointer at the buzzer. Yes, and we go to overtime. Now the extra period, Slammers up by two. Leroy Combs drives the lane. It goes, and the Slammers win game one in the series, 118 to 114. In the big time tonight, Hawks and Bullets. You've got to love Spud Webb. He loses the ball here. A lot of guys are dogging at this point. Watch Spud with the save, and he gets it to his own man. 43 points tonight for Dominique Wilkins. Look at two guys trying to cover him. They both hit the deck. The worst miss of the night on the drive. Doc Rivers goes up. Boing. But the Hawks win it big tonight, 118 to 98 in Atlanta. Great play by Spud Webb. Oh, listen, yeah. you know, it's true. A lot of guys at that point, they, you know, cash it That's in. Right. And he just keeps hustling. Three cheers to the little guys. Hip, hip. Hooray. That's all. Okay. Thanks. Okay. No, Spud, huh? <laughs> Sorry. Well, Zimmer, Jerry has some thoughts on new life at Zimmer in his commentary. That's next on News 5 Tonight. Hey, something big's headed your way. So huge, it'll be hard to get a grip on it. It's the Kroger Brands Taste of Quality Sale. Save on all the Kroger Brands your family loves. Balanced meals, balanced budgets. Now you can juggle all that and win at the Kroger Brands Taste of Quality Sale. I mean, what do you love more than saving money? <laughs> saving a lot of money. Try Kroger Deluxe Ice Cream, $1.99 a half gallon. Terrific savings on pet pride dog food, $5.49. And Kroger Premium Percolator Grind Coffee, $1.99. Let me tell you about something rare as Sunday mail. A real satisfaction guarantee. Furrow has it. They meet anybody's current price. Then if the stuff's not right, it doesn't fit, I bought too much. No sweat. I take it back. Furrow replaces it or gives me my money back. The right price, the right stuff, or we make it right. Furrow. Rare guarantee. The only thing rare is at times I have to use it. Sometimes you feel a little Mexican. And when you feel a little Mexican, try Chi Chi's new seafood fiesta sampler. One tempting seafood dish after another. Maybe more succulent seafood than you've seen on a table at one time. Dive in for just $6.95 per person. Chi Chi's, when you feel a little Mexican. Why does Jake Sweeney, year after year, lead the Tri-State in Chevrolet, Chrysler Plymouth, and Mazda sales? Why? Better deals. Zimmer's conversion to a coal-fired plant will continue to raise controversy in our area. Jerry has some thoughts on today's decision in his commentary tonight. Thanks, Toria. When Zimmer was first proposed, there was great fear about the building of a nuclear power plant in our area. But as it turns out, of course, more people died of boredom over the issue than radiation. For as a reality, Zimmer got nuked, victimized by mismanagement and inadequate attention to public safety concerns. It is the nuclear power plant that never was, sitting idly by in Moscow, Ohio, a concrete monument to failure, having produced literally no energy other than the 15 years of litigation and meetings and marches over what that plant should or should not be. Indeed, the mere burnings of the legal brief should be enough to heat our town for a generation. And though this white elephant will now never even give us a kilowatt of nuclear-produced power, the debate still rages on over what to do with it. That question is relevant because so far, $1.7 billion has been spent. Now, CG&E has been leading the charge to convert this never-used facility into a coal-fired plant. On the surface, that seems eminently reasonable. We'll need energy in our future. Nuclear power is now either too expensive or too dangerous or too unreliable. So let's see if we can turn this mistake into an energy-producing coal-fired plant. But there may have been cheaper solutions. 
there's been significant testimony and evidence that it'd be much cheaper to build a coal plant from scratch rather than trying to convert the boondoggle of Zimmer over to coal. It may also be significantly cheaper for CG&E to purchase power over the grid system on a long-term contract. Experts believe that's available, and it's a lot less costly than building a new plant that would only last 25 years anyway. Also, with major plants such as GM leaving the area, we may be facing a declining usage base, which means we don't need a huge power plant, all of which raises the question, if these possible solutions are cheaper, why does CG&E push to convert Zimmer to coal? Here's one possibility. If they don't convert Zimmer, then CG&E and the other utility owners will have to pick up the whole $1.7 billion loss. But if they do convert it, even though that may be a more expensive solution, they can pass a major portion of the cost on to you and me, the consumer. And there we have it. You see, the issue has never been making power. It's making money. From America's finest makers of better grade tailored men's clothing, we present an exciting spring and summer collection at Gentry, where you always save about half. These gorgeous $200 blazers featuring this season's most exciting colors are $105 at Gentry. And to complement your blazer, coordinating tropical worsted slacks, $60 elsewhere, $35 at Gentry. For fashion and value where you always save about half, shop Gentry just once. Then you gotta believe. Come feel the freshness. Tropicana. Tropicana Pure Premium shades your morning with a taste so fresh, so pure, so natural. Tropicana. Pure Premium. Only Florida oranges. With nothing added, nothing taken away. The taste could only be one. Tropicana. Feel the freshness. It's pure Tropicana. The most popular Porsche in Europe is the Porsche 924S. Europeans have been happily putting it through its paces on everything from the twistiest mountain roads to the no-speed limit German autobahns. But now, the real fun begins, because the 924S is available in America. See Northland or Tom Moser Porsche today and find out how you can lease a new Porsche. This father and son are alike in almost every way. The only real difference between them is age. Because the son is younger, statistics show he's a better life and health insurance risk, so he can buy insurance at lower cost. Basing premiums on risk makes it possible to give you the fairest life and health insurance rates possible. It's a principle that works for us all. The lower your risk, the lower your premium. That's all the time we have for now. Thanks for watching. From all of us here on News 5 in the red and the green, take care of yourself and each other. Good night. Good night.